Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I'm delighted to be joined virtually with Mark Cartwright with his fantastic movie, A Machine for Boredom. But for those who haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. Has your life been empty and meaningless? Are you searching for ways to show people your true value? Well, have I got something absolutely perfect for you. Not only will it make you more attractive, but you will be the envy of all of your friends. Girls and boys will love you and think you are rich and look famous. It will never rain again so you can throw out all of your umbrellas and go to the beach every day. Your life will be perfect. Everyone will want to have sex with you. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for bringing your film to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I have questions for days, actually, because yeah. it's just that interesting. Um, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Yeah, so it is basically an, ex it's an experimental film that reflects on consumerism and its relationship to self-worth and validation. And, um, you know, the pandemic that we just went through, that we've been sort of, you know, going through, um, is really forced people, I think, to spend time with themselves and to look at how they, you know, find purpose in life. And um, so I just wanted to play around with that, you know, especially in, in terms of consumerism, something that always interests me. Mark, honestly, I want to say, like, you are super talented. And, and I, I honestly watched your film several times because there's so much in there you know, and, and it was so every millisecond, there was just like a new, a new entry to a new thought. And I love when you make your audience force you to think and imagine. And, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I know obviously you sort of mentioned, yeah, no, I know you mentioned obviously a little bit where the kind of inspiration came from, but what was that kind of moment where you're like, you know what, I, I want to turn it into a film. And like, there's a lot of symbolism and analogies and experiences in there. Like, how did you decide to put that all together? Um, I, I mean, I'd been really dying to do experimental um, film. You know, I, I watched a lot of it and, um, I think that, you know, just sort of how people are in the world is always something that's interested me. I studied the relationship between media and society at NYU and um, I just sort of, you know, went right into it. So it's always been a, an interest of mine. And um, I think like, you know, into the pandemic, I was walking around, there's all these like billboards of like services and things that just never happened or, you know, just all these products and, you know, just sort of this advertising that was sort of, you know, sort of pushing itself to things that were never going to happen. And it just really started me thinking about how I'm like, you know, what are people doing now? You know, cause you can't run out and like, you know, buy a new outfit to make you look great. Cause no one's going to see it really. <laughs> or, you know, or, yeah. like, you know, so I was like, just really thinking, what are people doing right now? Like, what is, what are, how are people finding their, their, you know, how are they validating themselves in, in, in just in life? So yeah. it's sort of built from there. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 so much there's so much in there, and I, I by the way, I thought the way that it was shot was 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 wonderful. What did your kind of decision in terms of the color or, or black and white as such? What what made you sort of move in that direction? Right. Well, I am a photographer, um, and I love black and white photography, and so that was number one. I just like I I love black and white film and everything. Like you know, obviously, everything's moved to color, so people work in that. But I love a good black and white film. And um, I thought that for this particular film, I thought the, you know, just that sort of starkness was really, really lends itself to the story. And I felt, um, I really wanted to play around with the shapes and the shadows and the, the sharp lines and everything to sort of take people through this very sterile kind of um, environment for the character. And mm -hmm. I thought that was better done with black and white. Yeah, no, I mean it was it, it worked perfectly, and I and I love it. And um, it doesn't surprise me you're a photographer because you know, and it really did. It was picturesque to watch. Um, I, you know, t touching on some of the kind of consumerism, like you know, that you, you brought into the into the light there. I, right. I just it, it it was just so kind of almost disappointing of just like <laughs> this 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 conveyor belt and factory of of life that we're just doing for like absolutely no reason other than that's apparently what we're supposed to do yeah. and you know and and even just the example on the television of just like you know we're 
we're, we're, we're enlightened by a special offer that has like one cent off, but you end up paying more. And I was just like, oh God, we're, all, we're <laughs> terrible. Why are we fall for this stuff? Like, was that something that you just, you just thought, you know, I mean, again, this is everyday life. We're seeing this and experiencing yeah. this, but was that kind of an area maybe in your study you thought, I want to bring this to, to light? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I think like the older I get, like, you know, the, the more I sort of just examine just you know, how we do sort of just machine through the world and just like, mm -hmm. we don't really question, I think a lot of, I think a lot of times we just accept our reality. Yeah. And, you know, it's like the more, even now, like through the pandemic, I started getting into like, you know, investing and sort of like finance stuff. And you just sort of see how, how much is sort of given to us and like, sort of like, so that we sort of stay like, you know, complacent and just sort of do, do what yeah. we're supposed yeah. to do, you know? And, um, yeah, it's just like the more you dive into it and think about it, things and, and why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, you know, what is it? What is it? You know, what meaning am I placing on 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 just anything? You know, that that is is coming you know to me. Just the more it sort of drives you crazy. You're like, God, like what? You know, how can I step out of that? How can I sort of be my own person without like living? Yeah, no, it's true. It's right. You know? I mean, you know, I thought, I mean, whether it was kind of part of what you wanted to sort of showcase, but you know, it was, it, right. it, you definitely felt that like feeling of just the isolation that I think a lot of people have been kind of feeling and, and, yeah. you know, even that kind of anxiety that is growing by just being by yourself or maybe having too much right. time to think in there as well. Is that kind of something else we're trying to bring in? I mean, for sure. And it's like, even like touching upon, you know, even though we have like social media and everything, and even though everyone is technically together and sort of seeing everything, it is sort of isolating us. I feel like we as a society are becoming more and more and more isolated. Yeah. And so, you know, that, I mean, it's, you know, it doubles as kind of that. It's like how just in society we are sort mm -hmm. of isolating ourselves. Yeah. I, I I, I'm so curious. Like, I mean, again, I, I told you I love experimental film. We have a lot of amazing experimental film at New Filmmakers. I'm always curious, like, what, like, how do you put a film like this together? Like, you know, like, I mean, of course, it, everything kind of obviously has a sequence as such, but you know, right. like, there's a lot of quick. You have to have a really great editor, obviously, to I did work. For, I did it myself, yeah. Which I understand in this case, yeah, you did it yourself. Like, how, how is like when you're is do you, do you kind of discover as you go along when it's being filmed or, or did you always have a kind of pitch in your mind of what you wanted to capture? I tend to work more linearly. Like I, I definitely have things in mind. Like for something like this, I pull like images and I just sort of pull inspirations and things that sort of live in the, in the theme of what I'm trying to go for. And mm -hmm. like, I love like things like German expressionism and you know, just like things that like, um, I don't know, something about it just makes it. So it feels very, structured even though it has this like sort of experimental nature to it so um for me as a filmmaker i usually try i like to i work better when i sort of know what's going on when i lay, can lay things in front of me and watch and see these things so i'll maybe like you know um have these ideas and then as i'm i'll shoot it and then as i'm editing it yeah i put it together and like oh this feels good here that looks good there so i try to have the ideas um and usually that works well. And then if something comes to me, like while I am editing, you know, for this, I can go back and shoot something really quickly. Yeah. Or I'll play around with it. So it sort of winds up being this very layered, um, fun thing that, yeah, it does kind of grow as you're putting it together. Narratively, you have to kind of think differently. Because I think, obviously, if you're on a big movie set, you can't just like go back and shoot every five, you know, when you want to do something. Yeah. Like but, well, produ yeah. production design look, look look fantastic as well. It's really wonderful to watch because I know you really carefully thought about everything. You could really feel it and see it. And I, I love I love just watching it visually. Um, but you also had, a, I mean, I, it, it takes a certain kind of actor to sort of take on a role like this and really right. give you what is needed. So how, how is your process working with, with your actor? Yeah, so I work, um, so it's Baker Chase Powell. I work with him on a lot of um, films that we do. And he's also my producing partner. So it's like, we, we sort of like help each other to, you know, I, he needs acting material, I need directing material. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have a very good, you know, a very good relationship as far as, um, you know, he it's very collaborative and, and he sort of understands what I'm going for. And I think he's a great actor. He just did a film um, that I just did called We Die Alone that won like 
he won like got all these like you know acting you know awards and nominations for it so i'm always very confident in him and he's confident with me as a director so it's sort of yeah it's very collaborative which i like um when i'm working with people i like to sort of have that i want to hear what people have to say as well you know so well i mean speaking of which like what's the what's the reaction been um, for people that you shared the film with or at film festivals what's what's it been thus far sorry can i pause it for so a second far it's been Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sebastian, oh, sorry. sorry. I was just gonna say, um, for Mark, I think are you like when you put your hands on like the table, it kind of shakes the oh, okay. Like, I'll take a little. All right, got it, got it. All right. It's passion, Mark. It's passion. I, it's I, I, like, uh, yeah, no, don't no, you yeah, worry. I, I, yeah, I get it, yeah. I'm Italian, I'm restricting myself. I'm always trying to express myself in my hands, so I'm like tying myself right, right, right. crazy. <laughs> don't even worry. Thanks, Sebastian. Um Yes. Yeah, like what's, I'm, I'm just curious, like what's the, what's the reaction been thus far? So far it's been like, it's been very good, like kind of, cause it is my first, expo, it's my, like, cause I made two experimental pieces at the, um, during the one. So, but it's like, it's, it's been good. I'm, I'm excited that it is. Cause it's like, you know, anytime you try something new you want the, the reaction to be well. And I think kind of like you're like, I'm, I'm loving the references that people are, are, are saying. And I, I, I like that. Um, yeah, I, I think it's been being well received. So yeah, excellent. I've always wanted to get into this festival. So I'm excited that you guys Aww. are <laughs> we're, happy to, we're really happy to have you part of it. Welcome to the family. Um, what I'm, I, you know, I mean, I again, I, I could have watched the whole like feature version of your imagination because I'm really into this kind of stuff. And it's just so much to take in and, and visually to appreciate. But like, I'm just curious for you and your journey, um, you know, what what kind of stories and what stories inspired you? What kind of stories do you want to continue to sort of make and create? I am a big, I'm a, I'm a huge horror fan and I also like suspense thriller. So most of my thing, like um, I like character driven, um, like suspense and character driven thrillers. I love like, like Darren Aronofsky, like I love his work. I love like that kind of deep like character, um, you know, just where the struggling person, they just want to be accepted or they just want, you know, something that's so human and so basic but is very complex at the same time so my you know and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this experimental too is just because a lot of times when you're writing um a narrative it's like you know you can get very boxed in with the rules and and so I think with this experimental making an experimental film it sort of teaches me to think outside of the box and I can use that to sort of with the the narratives to to do sort of thriller and which I kind of want to do next is like a, a thriller experimental kind of thing that's something a little bit more creepy. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I love playing. And, and it's great because I feel like this genre has really expanded itself the last, you know, few years and it's, it's, it's really exciting. Well, that's great. Um, just, just because uh, I'm, I'm so curious, but what is next for you that you're working on or doing? Yes, I am writing a feature. I'm working with a group, um, Know, yeah, that's one thing. Another thing is I'm working on a group, we're working on an anthology. It's a horror anthology. And um, yeah, I think those two, I mean, that's keeps me pretty busy, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's amazing, that's amazing. And, and with your experience thus far, for any of our filmmaking audience out there, like what, is there any kind of piece of advice that you sort of take on yourself or anything you could share with the audience for any filmmakers out there? Right, right. I mean, I think like, you know, persistence, I think being authentic, you know, and I think, um, especially when directing and things, I think the more integrity you have, the more you stay true to, you know, yourself and also communicate with people, you know, and be authentic in your communication. I think that helps a long ways, you know, it's like already the business is so complex and, and making these, um, you know, making a movie is there's a lot of moving parts. So the more, the more simple you can do, you know, keep it by, you know, like I said, keeping your integrity, you know, and it's, it's, it helps a lot. Most definitely. Well, listen, Mark, thank you so much for bringing this film to us. Keep bringing more movies to us and making more, please. But, but thanks so much. It's, um, I, I, it will never leave my mind, which is great. It's always a good thing. So, <laughs> but thanks for being part to, to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Thank you.